Hello and welcome to Sweet Omo Town Internet Radio, and I'm joined as usual with my co-host, Declan Ford. Okay, Declan, this is a little interview with a slight difference. Indeed, and the, the, the lockdown is now easing, and it's our first interview face-to-face. Yes. <laughs> and we, we socially distanced, yes? Ah, socially distanced, yes. And you had great crack. You know, it was, it's, uh, we're, we're out of practice because we're normally digging through... Uh, hours and hours of old tapes and this is literally minutes old or days old by the time it goes out right. on the air. That's right, I tell you this, it's the, and the ink's not even dry on the page. Not at all. No, but do you know what? why, why I loved it? It's because it, it touches upon things that, that really I'm interested in which is uh, music and also drama. Mm. And I just had a ball. Oh, Mary's a lovely, lovely lady. Yeah. Uh, I remember her singing in the choir for years and, and the Sacred Heart Church as well and and the pantomimes and the last pantomime you and I were involved in, she was the very couple. That's right. Uh, we trailed the boards with, with uh, the Oma Theatre Workshop mm-hmm. and Stevie McKenna and was involved with Tom Sweeney, of course, the great Eugene Floyd, yes, that's right. Ray Moore, mm. uh, John Taggart. Yes. That, that was before the Street Arts Centre opened. That was in the Christian Brothers uh, Assembly Halls. That's mm. right. That's mm. right. And the, yeah. and, the bro- and the brothers there, I remember rehearsing there. And then we rehearsed over Christmas. and Because I, I think it went on uh, either the tail end of December or the start of January. Do you remember that? Mm. I think just before Christmas, I think. Is that what it was? Right. 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 I, wouldn't right. Be sure. I wouldn't be sure. I think I played in one of them Tweedledum. You were typecast. Uh. <laughs> I think then in another one I played the part of uh, an Irish waiter, I think in a Spanish restaurant. Oh, ah, my my talents and range has no bounds. Yes, I know what you mean. I know. But it was great to chat to Mary about the Oma players, about the Pantos, and also to hear about her growing up in Oma. And she mentions the late Nora Torney. Yes. Who was her teacher. Yes. And I remember Stevie put on a play called Heritage, which was written by Austin Lynch's father. And in the original production, Nora Torney was the last of the cast still alive. Uh-huh. And Nora Torney came to the play. Cool. You know, an old, an old play set, I think, in maybe at the War of Independence or whatever, for I vaguely remember. I remember Nora Torney then. She and Mother Oliver must have shared a classroom or adjacent classrooms from my earliest memories in right. P1 and uh, yes I remember her and she had a hearing aid I mean, one of the old fashioned hearing aids that you had in the front good lord uh, right right yes I remember her around the fascists as well right well of course mother Oliver taught me you know she made me what I am today uh, my abiding memory is playing in the sandpit did you get on uh, her little rocking horse I quite possibly did I didn't and I held oh, it against well, her <laughs> so much so I have a rocking horse in my garage. Right, right. <laughs> and, and if Mother Oliver comes, she's not getting on it, I know. Not a chance. I know. No. I know. Uh, but it was not it great to hear uh, the, you know, Mary's reminiscence. A lovely, lovely lady. Oh, a great lovely, storyteller. Lovely, 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 lovely. No, that was home of the heyday, wasn't it? When you think sort of 50s and, uh, and, and they were about in the early 60s. When, That's right. When thousands upon thousands of people came looking to get into... A small, what, 300-seater town hall, maybe? That's right, that's right. And uh, as, as the late Paddy McLoon told us, they would come down in buses from Derry, you know. And uh, I was delighted that that, um, that Stevie kind of resurrected the Pantos. Yes. And even now, locally, the, the Pantos have kind of taken on a life of their own with the, the local GEA clubs being involved in that. Yes. And, uh, and uh, I think they also put one on in uh, Lis, Lis Malahan. I, I seem to think they have run them for a few years. I think it's great. It's, it's innocent entertainment. It really is. And it's, it, it, my daughter's and she loves it. And I think it, it just changes. Do you understand? The personalities change, but I think at Oma Drive, it still still lives on. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, we have great love of music here. And uh, I think people just like to go out and entertain each other. Yeah. And very, very enjoyable. I'll tell you. A program coming up the line fairly soon will be a session, uh, a couple of sessions we recorded in Owen Smith's cottage up in Ferna, say where someone has a very nice garden. Lately. Oh, I, I, I know exactly where you're talking about. I look forward to that. I, you know, and uh, yeah. and hopefully in the intro to that we can elaborate a wee bit more on what the the Irish music session is. Yes, and and it still is. Oh, absolutely. It well, is. obviously, with the lockdown, people can't go and visit like they used to, but. 
it's coming back bit by bit and people do spend more time in their homes now and, and they will share their homes with more and more people which is all to the good absolutely absolutely so uh, i look forward to hearing uh, mary uh, livingstone today and also then yeah the traditional session in another broadcast and our thanks to christopher kennedy who suggested this lady and thankfully he did and thankfully it suited us today to go and do this today because you don't do these things at the time they get put put back and then forgotten about us right. so thank you Christopher um, for, for giving us the idea and opening the door for us to go and talk to and you and we were made very very welcome absolutely I was just going into someone's house to have a chat it was great. Yeah. lovely so sit back for the next hour or so and we'll recall the memories of the lovely Mary Livingstone Well, Mary, we're here to talk about your memories, and well, I, in particular, I want to talk about drama and music. Uh, from memories, I <laughs> from I was no height. I was in um, we 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 uh, we concerts, you know, Hi. singing here. We went over the whole country. Right. I could tell you every we town, every. and you know. <laughs> well, are you I mean, from? I mean, the Omar? memory wasn't. So oh no. Well, are you from Oma originally? Oh, born and bred. Where, I where was in Brookmount. Over there, over the, the it used to be what did they call it first? They used to call it uh, over, over by Charlton's garage, you know, right over that road, and there were all wee houses there, wee small houses. But we had the big, the big whitewashed house. There was two, just one whitewashed houses there, big big ones, uh -huh. and we had a big orchard and all at the oh. back. Mm -hmm. And and then. Is that where your family always lived? That's where, no, gosh, no, from, I mean, there was 14, if a, if my poor mother had 14 of a family. And where was your mother 14. from? Was, was she from? She over? was from, she lived up the, as they call it, up the barrack lane, as they call it, up where the, where the, where the soldiers used to be, yes. just at the bottom of that, and then you could go up in the, the police barracks was, or the not the police barracks, but the the, the army. army, the army barracks was there. up there. What was her maiden name? Uh, she was Ma Maggie O'Lone. Oh, she lived up that way too. Oh, there was wee houses up there, oh, and that's where she lived with. Now she, when she was born, I think her mother died at the birth of her. You know, and she never knew her mother, oh, oh, so it was just an aunt, oh, aunt, aunt. Um, Maggie alone, I remember. That's about all I remember about them. You know, uh, they all uh, died. She and and out yes, and uh -huh. out and she, and yeah, and she, um, she was born bred. And then when she, when she left school, we didn't know much about it then because we never talked that much about family there. But my mother had fourteen of a family, nine girls and five boys. And there's not one of them left, now only myself. And did they And my sister in Scotland, she was a nurse, right. Teresa. And, and she's just Teresa and myself left. Right. And did the rest of them travel or did many did, of them stay at home? Yeah, over? well, they worked. I mean, there was. Uh, they, they just worked in these houses. Rose, one of my sisters, she was a, a nursemaid to Mrs. Hook. You know the optician. Oh yes. She yes. was a nursemaid, and she had she had three children, one boy and two nice girls, two wee children, and she reared them up until they left and went away to college. My goodness, my Rose did, oh, my sister. Oh, mm -hmm. And then. Um, so those were the days. Those were the days. Now that's 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 uh, neither today nor yesterday. No, that's, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> To bring back the yeah. those and they, you can't oh, believe it, oh, like hello, you, know. you know. Well, tell me then the the uh, involvement in the drama. How did you get into that kind of world of entertainment? Yes. And well, you see, when I w even when I was at school, Mrs. Torney, remember Mrs. Yes, Torney? She Laura was Torney. my very first teacher, and she took me under her wing. You know, right. she loved right. me even when the the remember they used to have an inspector coming every yeah. so often. Right every year or whatever it is and she used to pick me to go and sing Mary she, 
I mean, there was other singers there, but she always picked me. <laughs> she always says, now, Mary, you have a nice wee song off. Uh, we're going to, when the before the inspector left, and he, he used to say, oh, lovely voice, you've got a lovely voice. And then into the faces, Mrs. Torney used to put me into the faces. I'd got med- medals bundling out like that with first. Where were the, th- the faces And held? I'll tell you one great thing about, I'll rem- always remember this, because we used to be always up against the 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 dairy ones they yeah. were great oh. singers and all and there was a was it was that she called her she was a big tall person she was only young then probably might be dead now but she was a lovely lovely woman but she used to take they used to say as uh whoever her name was her name it'll come to me oh, now yeah. Yeah, no, no, no. was it sissy parlor sure from that. Derry, right. and she was a wonderful singer and uh, they all, uh, 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 Brady, God rest her, Brady, that's dead there now. You know John, John, John and Brady. That John had the wee, f- the wee shop there down. Yes. You know him. Yes, John Myler, John Myler. Myler, Myler. John yes, Myler and Brady. And Brady used to always, when we were in the face, she always played for me. Uh-huh. And then she used to take me to her house and run me over the songs and all. Right. And can you remember the name of any of the songs? They're all, they're all Irish well, I, I remember as well the, the, the songs we used to sing. I sung first for the inspector at in the school, and me was as nervous, you know. Come, little lady bird, come, pretty one. You are the lock of my... <laughs> but I couldn't remember. But it was uh, maybe a, that's years ago. Yes. She was only we, oh, you know. So and funny. every year I used to sing that we saw really? we uh, pretty ladybird, right. you know. That was your, your signature yes, song at the start. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I was gosh, sure, I I was even singing on the TV and everything. Right. Uh, uh, you know Tommy. Oh, Tommy uh, James. Uh huh. Tea time with Tommy. Tea time with Tommy. He used to play the piano. Even, yes, I and sang I, with tea time. He, he would do requests. You had all. to go up early and and have your songs off and all, right. and uh, and it was a whole session. We used to go up early in the morning, and you were coming home again about ten or eleven o'clock. So he's a big tall English man. Uh, right. No, he was only was a wee man. He wasn't. Was he? But he was one very nervous man. Right. It, you know, he used to say, now he got me to sing over him whatever I was going to sing in the first place. <sighs> and um, and then he, he would say, now, you know, this and that, and that, and that. <laughs> what to do this and what to do. But anyway, uh, I, I was on the TV and all. I was on the TV. He said, now you watch the TV because you're... A, and I got paid for it and everything. They sent me a cheque then. I nearly died. It wasn't that much, but... What? I kept that check <laughs> for ages and ages, you know. Oh, I remember. Yeah. Well, then probably it might have been only five pounds oh, or something like that, but that was money that oh. time. And also to have you it know, from yes. Ulster Television, uh-huh. Have Luck House, yes. you know. Oh, that's lovely. That was well, well tell, tell me then about um, when you were been into teenage years and, and then yeah. a young adult. Did you get involved with with the local drama group then, or were you involved? I did, with surely. Pilots? See, uh, we knew Paddy Laird. Paddy Laird lived down uh, uh, at the bottom of our backyard. You know, Brook Street that time. Right. He lived there, and we used to go down the back. We had a big orchard and all there, and he used to we used to throw over apples and all over to the. But sure, we've known all them for years and years, even when we were only small then. <laughs> And, uh, and then the first thing when when Paddy and and uh, pa- what do you call Paddy Bowes and all those mm-hmm. when they all g- started up these shows, I was always booked for the shows for uh, many many years. And would that have been the Oma Players, or uh, was that, a that was the Oma Players at first? No, before they started the Oma Players, at well they could have been in the Oma Players then, but but this was before I was in it. Uh, it was the pantomime started. And they uh, used to the ca- then. Uh, I mean, Maureen Boner, God rest Ma- Ma- Maureen. I didn't know nothing about pantomimes then. And Maureen and Maureen Boner and uh, her sister Kathleen, and they were all the the principals, you know. Then that time, right. and uh, we used to say, my sister Teresa and I, we used to say, God, we'd love to be in the pantomime. So then we saw it in the paper, you know. And my mother used to say, you're not going there. She never allowed us anywhere, my mother. We never got outside the 
bucket. <laughs> because we had a big garden. My mother said, get away down your own garden yeah, there and play yourself. The, the dangerous so, world yes. of, of local drama. But anyway, um, we managed anyway. Teresa and I went for the rehearsal. And the first thing I was picked for to be the princess, it was... It was uh, Cinderella or something mm. like that. Was on, you know, the little girl first, and then she was put into a b b thing. Well, I had uh, all my photographs are up there. So you see, up uh, oh, I had a big oh. album. I had a big, big album. And, uh, since I started the shows, I had them. I had every right. wee show and play and everything that I was in. I I had a big album, and then somebody and I can't for the life of me remember somebody came and asked me for a lend of it, they were writing something about it. And never ever never got written. it back, oh, and I, I can't know. remember. It is, I know, I know, and uh, do you remember, I borrowed Paddy Laird's album, uh -huh. and I think I held on to it for a fortnight. And oh. I, you know, I remember a very cross Paddy Laird oh, one, and quite right too. Yeah. But mm. anyway, one thing, you know. Yes, well I did, I, I did, I went around them, I think, uh, Bridie, Bridie McCafferty. Um, we were great friends. Bridie was the was a, a, the principal boy one time. Ah. Boy, you know, she had these beautiful fingers and a lovely leg. You know, I now always had very skinny legs, so <laughs> they always put me into the the princess. You know, because I was always wearing a long dress, like. But I had the voice, you yeah. see, the singing and that. Oh. So probably that's why they had me in there. Ah. So I mean, when we got into those shows, when when my, with everybody coming to for me to go away to sing at right. concerts and sing right. here and sing there. Right. And, and you see the songs that you, you sang for the Pantos were they all written by by Frank McCrory? Frank McCrory. And then Frank. would you have say current songs that were were popular? Would yeah. they be included as well? That's true. No, he. Uh, w we always sang uh, some songs from the shows, you know, from South Pacific yeah. and things like that. No, it w wasn't South Pacific that time. It was uh, My Fair Lady My Fair and all Lady. those, oh, you yes, know. Rogers and and we always, the, you used to always pick them. And uh, Agnes, it was Agnes Slave in that time. She used to take me to go over them, you know, to sing. I used to... Well, learn who, from who was Heidi. she the musical director of she well she well, you played the piano she took us now it wasn't her at the beginning when I started first I was quite young and it was uh, 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 oh, what did you call it they had a they used to have a bicycle shop up uh, uh, and John and uh, McSorley's was it McSorley's there was Miss McSorley she was great on the piano uh -huh. and so they used to c collect me and take me to I think there used it used to be in the town hall that time. There was a piano and all there, oh. and to the, the it took me there to 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 sing, you know. And before you knew it, once we had the pantomime through, there was more people coming for me to go to this place and that place to sing. Yeah. It used to be great, <laughs> and you just sing. You never got no money or oh. anything. The first time I ever got money for singing, and I was over the moon. Uh, it was the the uh, it was Joe Keating, God bless oh, Joe Keating. Yeah, he was the he was in charge of the golf club. Well, he was the captain or whatever it is. And he came to me one day and he says, "Mary, uh, we're having a bit of a do in the golf club. First time I was ever in the golf club, and uh, and oh, they treated me like a princess. Oh, I couldn't well. believe it, you know." Because you took everything for granted. You were delighted to be asked to sing and that, and you sang everywhere. So anyway, uh, I uh, I did. Uh, Joe Keating came to me and he says, "Mary he says uh, we're having a bit of a do in up in the golf club." She he says we're having a couple of others, you know. But he said, "Would you sing a few songs for us?" And I says, "Well, well, surely." So I made up a few songs and all, and was at it. And whenever we were going home, then at the last night it was a great big night. At the very end of it, then Joe came to me and gave me this check for whatever the money was I can't remember but I couldn't believe it yeah. you know I was all over the world and never never was offered any money you know well and tell me did, did uh, Paddy Laird and Paddy Bogues uh, direct or produce the Pantos would they have been involved or oh, they oh definitely Paddy yeah. Laird Paddy Bogues was 
top dog then, Paddy. Right. And he was a gentleman, Paddy Boggs. He was wonderful. He used to take you under your wing, you know, under the wing and, you know, put you over your singing and all that, you know. Right. And, oh, he, and Paddy Laird, he was just the last word, oh, Paddy. Oh, yeah. I, I remember Paddy, Paddy was very kind to me. Uh, the first play I was involved in with the old players was a play called Ladies in Retirement. Yes, I did that. Do you hear that? Kathleen was Given in that. was in it and Marty yes. Martin. Yes, that's right. And I, I was there. I just helped along. And uh -huh. uh, Paddy Bogues or Paddy Laird was doing the makeup. Yeah. And he explained each piece of makeup he that's put on. That's true. Uh -huh. And he had to take the time with me. Like I was only about and 16 so Paddy or 17. had to do that with me whenever I you was know, he was very learning kind. first. You know, Paddy Laird, and then before you knew it, eh, whenever we'd have be plays on and maybe get some we knew girls, he used to call me, he used to give me a ring and he used to say, I'm sending this wee girl over. He says, would you put her over right. now, put her over, you know, such and such a thing. And it used to be, I used to be delighted about oh, this, you know, he used to put he me. Was, he was very kind to me now. Uh -huh. I, I'd be able to take time to explain yeah, what he was that's doing. True. And he saw Paddy you were interested. Good. Yeah. You know, he was he good. He would encourage you by, by he just, was indeed. just talking to you as man uh -huh. to man. You know, he was. Uh, you know, they were so kind. Uh, I mean, when I was in these shows, they, they were so good. You know, mm -hmm. and then I was in the oh, did the pantomimes for I did the principal gear for uh, seven years, right. one year after the other, right. and then I said, Scott. You need to get somebody else because I'm not getting any younger, you know. I used to say to Paddy, and Paddy used, Oh, not at all, you'll never grow old, he said, for Paddy. And he had me, I said, People will be talking about us, and I was well aged then, you know. So then, I, I mean, Father, there was one of the priests, wasn't Remember, we used to do them for the priests, and they used to get all the, the takings and everything. And it, so uh, we we talked to this. I don't. I can't remember. It was a, it was a, a priest that used to wear these leather jackets and everything. Do you remember him? Who was that? Father Shields, no. No, 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 not at all. You wouldn't get Father Shields. <laughs> <laughs> he was a gem too. He started the musicals then, the boys and girls clubs. You know, he had me. I was top dog every oh, day. You know, and the, and the. the the proceeds from the a lot of the pantos oh, would go went, into the parish. Yes, it all went to the parish. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what they would have done, the priest and the the churches and everything else, because it all we made hundreds of pounds. Yeah. You know, not that I was to know anything about uh, that. That's between the producers oh, and that. Right. You know, but uh, I mean, we knew. Gosh, night after night, and we used to have the pantomimes on for a whole week. And then they the put them on then for a couple of extra days. So Paddy Laird said, one time Paddy got us together and he says, it's not fair. And we used to do the Christmas, all the Christmas and the New Year and everything. And they used to be, they used to be turning them away in groves. Always packed, you know, we used I'm to be delighted to see this. And Paddy McLoon told us that, that busloads would come down from Derry. That's right. You know. Oh, the dairy ones all came and all from all over the, those towns. Honest to goodness, they were great. And and if you look at the pantos and the, and the, we'll call it the straight plays, was your preference the pantos or? Did no, do you know this? I was always very nervous with my singing, you know. Right. But I mean, everybody used to say, "Oh, you're a marvelous singer. You should have been, you know, you should have got your voice." Well, I did get my voice trained. Uh, Paddy McAlunny's, uh was a, was a music teacher. She used to teach. She used to teach music in the town hall, oh, right. and you she know she, that was well. her teacher. Oh. That she was a teacher, and she used to. Uh, she had pupils, mm, and uh, so I was. She was there one day when I was singing. I was going over some song, and she came to me, and she says, "She says you've got a beautiful voice, Mary. Gracious, she says, beautiful voice." And I says, "Oh, hi, but she." I says, you know, I, I don't know, you know, whether I'll be singing. But she says, no, you wouldn't have much. She said, so she took me for a while, trained my voice, right. trained my breathing and everything, you know. Right. And it was uh, unbelievable how you, how you, your voice could change. You remember to take the breathing at the right. proper time. Right. Just to be marvelous, you know. Uh -huh. But then uh, she, she only had me for a wee while because then she was. Uh, at that time, she was from Enniskill. She was Paddy McAlonny's sister. 
Oh, that's the the. She was a music teacher. Yes, that's the the actor. No, Paddy. she didn't. Oh, aye, Paddy, Paddy the pa actor. Yes. Right, right. Paddy that, McElhenney, the. That's the the the. Uh, uh, and she the took me. She says, Mary. She says, and I said, God, I couldn't afford to get my boys trained. She says, you will not need any money. She says, it'd be a pleasure. She says to teach you. She mm -hmm. said. She says, I will not take one penny of you if you can make an arrangement. That she used to teach in the, she had a uh, class. She was a, te she was a teacher herself and she used to go around the schools, I think it was. Right. But she used to say, you come, just come d down to the town hall. That's where she had in one of the rooms. And she says, you come down on uh, such and such a day. And she'd run me over, you know, the breathing and... And, and all the voice exercises? Yes, in the exercises. Right. <laughs> 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 and it was unbelievable how high you could really go. I used to say, no, I could never go that high. You can, she says, never going over this. Right. Sure enough, oh God, I was like an opera <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't believe it when you weren't used to it, you know, those days. Yeah. Oh, but it was really, it was really wonderful and mm. those people all taught me yeah. and I I didn't uh, you know appreciated them terribly mm. and then she she was going she was Paddy McElhoney's you know Paddy oh, the, the actor. Great actor he was in uh, that was his, all gas and gators she and was his sister well my mother taught with his sister she also one of uh, I don't know if he had any other sisters but one of them taught down in a wee place called Roscar uh -huh. in for outside Balik Oh, yeah. And my mother worked with my mother was a teacher, oh, and the two of them. I have a photograph of the, the, yeah. the two of them in the big long class. Mm -hmm. Paddy McLennan, and he was a great actor. Oh, Paddy was, and he was yes. such a. Whenever he went away, then to be an actor, yeah. you know. And then he used to come. Used to have sort of a night in the town on the, what do you call the big hotel at the other side of. It's still there, the well, Royal the, Arms, the Royal you know. Arms the we had, that's where we all had our, our rehearsals ah, and everything. Right. We had no place else. I mean, the town hall was falling down that time. Right. I mean, you were not safe going into it, even ah. the stage. Oh, it was no. terrible it's compared to the place we have now. It's yeah. magnificent. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's great, it's great, you know. But, you know. Well, tell me, do you remember then others? Did uh, Peter McGovern, did he sing at all or was he a, a Peter straight was actor? a lovely singer in his own way, you know. He used to sing all those old uh, Irish songs, you know. The old ballads. Oh, lovely ballads, oh. lovely. And when we'd have do's or anything, everybody did their bit play. Like, or Peter McGovern. Peter, Peter McGovern. oh, he was a gem ah. too, great great actor oh yes it was yes. wonderful you know and you wouldn't have heard his word like it right. wasn't one that pushed himself on he he did his part and did it excellent yes. it was just great right. but uh, i admired them those older people because they were very very interested and mm -hmm. did their acting and any parts like that they did them wonderful mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and peter was lovely lovely and very good crack, you know, when you'd be out on a day, like, or out on a night. He used to come over all these great charms. <laughs> just great stories and that, uh, just, you know. I remember seeing him in the, t in the town once, and he must have had about six people around him, uh, and he was holding court, oh, telling yes. stories. That, that was his delight. He could yeah. tell you a story or oh, two, yeah. honest to goodness. Great, great he was too, great. You know? He was really yeah. great. Mm -hmm. Well, are, are there any plays that you've been involved in that, that you remember with great you fondness? Mean, I have been in them. Gosh, if, if you had it told me in time, I could have had time to look them up. I've got all those, you know, I've got the programs. The plays, oh, the programs are the up plays. like that. I have them up on a shelf away right. up in one of the wee cupboards there oh. and I mean I, I could have got somebody to get some of them down at least oh, right. well, if you had to said at the time did you prefer comedies or this I this loved the plays oh. I loved the plays the I used to hit having to practice the singing and all you know right. you had to go and and they used to say I can't understand you you know loving these plays first I, I would have put the plays first Right. And that's the truth. Right. The, I used to love them. And then so, when you were singing in the pantos, did you have to act as well? Oh gosh. And then I. Oh you did surely. To yeah. go from speaking to uh -huh. as you that, singing oh, and yes, singing in almost an opera uh -huh. style. You had surely. You'd have to be on your toes you had to all be. the time. Oh gosh, you had to be. And and uh, keep an, an ear uh -huh. for the, the music. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. in the pantos, did they have a, a a mini orchestra or was it a piano? 
No, they had an orchestra. Yeah. Um, Agnes Slavin was the head of the of the organ. Well, now there used to be um, oh, what did you call them? Now? You know, Bridie Ma Bridie M Myler? Kennedy uh, Myler. Yeah. Yeah. Her uh, her husband's her husband's brother. He, he was he, he was head over the Herald office there one time. He was a lovely, mm. lovely man too, right. and he was in a lot of the shows. Aye. You know, he didn't do them, but he always sorted them out. And, you know. and w would Jimmy O'Neill have been involved in the in the music? Remember Jimmy? Did he play no, the clarinet? No, no, Jimmy hadn't. He hadn't. Not with us. He, he was. He involved, was no. with. He was with other concerts. But of course, if if you would, you could. These some of some of those people out of the orchestras, out of those shows, they used to get them to for the for the season, you know, for yeah. the oh, aye, for the run of months, the play, aye, yeah. and play, and they used to all. Oh, that's how they got the orchestra. And uh, Mr. Myler, he was the conductor, right. and Aggie Slavin was the main pianist, oh. and then there was there was a trumpet and there was drums and it was a beautiful oh, orchestra. Right. Just made it up just while the shows oh were on. And was Tony Mathers involved with the, the Oma players? Oh, Tony was, uh, he was a lovely man too. He was, uh, what about, is Tony living or dead? Oh, now? he's hale and hearty. Oh, she's still living. He's still living. Oh, and thank he's, God. He's oh, a, to a uh, many's a play. I did a play with Tony uh, one time and uh, I was married to him and he was, he was a, he and Tony always such I don't know how he ever acted the part but he was always such an easy going fella you know and did everything so well well he was uh, the part he had was it was very cruel uh, for the right. wife you know used to beat her up and on right. she used to come I used to, this was me I used to come and, and tell the it was Peter McGovern was in charge that time and they used to be forever given given out to him and all you know and it was a great play, but it, I was trying to remember that play, but it was mm -hmm. great. Oh, he was a great actor. Oh, Tony, he was so easy going, oh, and yet yeah. he got through the part so wonderful. No matter what parts he did, he did them yeah. just to the oh, last. Oh, no, he, would, he, he was yes. very disciplined he was in his indeed, approach to Tony. it and that, you know. And oh, he was great. He was just Oh, he's lovely, lovely man oh, no, too. He's still, look, he's in fine and health. Is it good? We, the, whenever I mean, we lost count of each other. Then when we used to go to, uh, when I used to go to mass, I was in the choir. You know, ah. the church choir. I sort of loved the church choir. Yes. It's wonderful. I loved it. Who, who um, was the musical director of the church well, choir? I, it was Agnes Slave in that time that got me into the the play the organ. Then mm -hmm. that was the first one that I ever knew mm -hmm. Agnes, and she was great. She was. God, they used to get her to do everything for Agnes Slavin. Mm -hmm. And um, she used to get me to sing the soloist and all. But then before that, uh, there was Mrs. Lynch. You know, oh, Mrs. Austin Lynch. She was a wonderful right. singer, right. real trained voice. And she used to always get singing the rest of Soviet Sam, you know. Oh, and we used to say, God, I'd love to be able to sing that. <laughs> and my day came. <laughs> my day came. She oh. always, always picked me. It was. Uh, um, Mary, Mary Devine, she, oh, poor Mary, she took me under her wing then, <laughs> when the rest of them all had give up, and she used to take me down to her house and run over when I was doing anything, and she used to say, now you're going to sing, uh, I, I want you to sing the Rasp and Soriel Sam, we were always loved to be picked for that, and I said, oh gosh, no, I, I didn't think I was capable enough of doing it, she said, Mary, she says, you are, I, I, you're the first one, she says, you're singing the Rasp, well, I, first time I sang the Rasp and Soriel Sam, oh, but thank God, I mean, I had a tip and all of it, and I, I, I couldn't believe it was me who was singing, I was just that my voice, <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Well, tell me, did, did you have to sing in Latin as well, or was it all English? Oh, no, no, we never had to sing in Latin. No. There it's might have been odd ones when Paul Pritchard took over Paul, and he always had me sing in Raspel Soriel Sam. Right. Uh, if he was, sometimes if he was caught, sometimes and somebody maybe couldn't do the, the Raspel Soriel, Paul would ring me then and say, Mary, go over that, <laughs> such and such a thing. And I said, oh, Paul, I'll never be able to do it. And I've done it the best I've ever seen, you know. And he used to be delighted with me doing this. But Paul always had me then for a responsorial sound. 
And then I got on a, a bit and a bit more nervous. Oh. I got there late, late, you know, since. And I, I said to Paul, don't pick me anymore for the rest and so I said, oh, Mary, you still can sing it. And I used to say, no, please don't. Because I would have been afraid of me uh, going wrong. And, and then, and then I especially with, myself with there. a big congregation. Aye, you wouldn't and with, let and, yourself down. And with, you, I mean, I wouldn't have lost the voice or anything, but uh, maybe yeah. might have forgot the lines uh, or the yeah. words. or. Yeah. But uh, so then he contented himself then and got some of the younger ones uh, then to sing it, you know. So, uh, 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 Isn't the, the, the human voice is strange. Um, I remember reading that uh, Al Jolson's voice got stronger uh -huh. as he got older. Oh, and, well, that, that and, is and true. Deeper. Yes, my voice got stronger too. I used to have a wee puny wee bosh and until Miss uh, Slavin, she made me you know, uh, uh, come out, you know, uh, you know, right. go up the scales and oh. I say, well, can't go that high, you can go that high and sure enough, you know. Because I, th I think Bing Crosby's voice got deeper uh, yeah. as he got older uh -huh. as well. Uh -huh. And then there are other singers, I mean, I would hear sometimes in the old show bands, you yeah. know, fellas that were great singers in the 60s uh, yeah. shouldn't be singing now, some no, of them. No, that's you know, a, the voice. still, you can know that oh. the... Isn't yeah. it funny it's that? strange, but then you look at, mm -hmm. say, Frankie you know, McBride. If I knew um, Tony McBride, or Chan Frankie McBride, he and was... And the voice mad. is as mellow. <gasps> I loved Frankie McBride singing. Oh. And, you know, he couldn't, he wouldn't sing a note. What mind when Father Sh we were in Father Shields' uh, what did you call that? The club we the were in, the Boys and Girls, and Girls yes. Club, and we had concerts, and he was always in the background. And then somebody said about right. Frankie McBride, they used to say, "Get Frankie to sing, get Frankie to sing," and uh, no, he was too nervous; he wouldn't. And then one, once he started, yeah. and they put him on in the concert singing solo bits, and he, he used to he had a great deep voice, oh, you know, mellow. and he sang. We did a show Beautiful. where uh, Paul Robeson. Yes, well, you wouldn't have believed it then. Um, I think it was Aggie Slavin put him over it. Could have been Mr. Uh, McCrory. Yes. You know Frank, Frank McCrory, McCrory that time. We used to go up to his house right. and s do all our singing up there, you know. And he right. thought there was nobody like me, and I used to be all <laughs> <laughs> wow. do, you, do you remember Brian Call coming to sing in the town hall? Oh, Brian. Brian and I were like that. We were great friends. Great, great friend, and he was and uh, always will be a really down to earth fellow. And he could have, he, I think he was all over the world, wasn't right. singing. Oh, do you realize that Brian will be 80 next birthday? No, same as me. Really? That's well, neither of the two of you look at it. Honest to goodness, that's the truth. Oh, so we did a great oh, interview. <laughs> Well, you were talking about... But I don't feel like it when no. I chat and that, you know. Oh, for goodness sake. Oh. <laughs> well, you know, you were talking about um, the the breath control and you mentioned Paul Robeson. Uh -huh. Frank Sinatra did a live version of Old Man River. Uh -huh. And his breath control is incredible because yes. it goes down and it goes down, yeah. down, down, and then up, up, up. And if you try to keep your breath in control, mind you, you, you have to be in control of it, yeah. like the voice, to be able to do that. Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, you talk about Frank Sinatra. I yeah, uh, no, I didn't sing. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> I loved Frank Sinatra. Thank you. He had such a smooth, beautiful mm. voice, you know. And he the, had a great. There was a great interview of him, you know, years ago before he died. I a great big one and he, the, he always said that you know when these great singers get you can't even make out a word they're singing you know just, but Frank Sinatra you would always know he had perfect uh, the diction, diction. Yep. absolutely marvellous and yeah. he used to always do when he'd sing any song should it be the high one or the low one you knew every word he was saying and then when these fancy singers get on now it was like Brian Cole, Brian was excellent. Brian never faltered. You knew every word he was saying, no matter where he went or what he did. He was just wonderful. And it didn't. he never, never showed that he was in more force in the voice. He no. just sang his song oh, yeah. and it came out beautifully. And we, he was just great. We interviewed him and he is now yodeling again. Oh, he was a wonderful yodeler. And then, but I think with the spoken, 
The old, but he just, uh, he's given uh, up uh, cigarettes. Oh, sure, he used he to never smoke. He can yodel again, you know. He was a lovely lad. He used to never smoke or anything else. He was yeah. just a lovely lad. Uh, but, oh, God, I think he was all over the world oh singing, yeah. wasn't he? Oh, yeah. Oh, and gosh, I mean, he, he was. He is pretty much the... And, you mean, he was so down to earth. Oh, yeah. Like, if he was at the far side of the street, he would say, Mary, over he'd come and have a chat. Do you mind such and such yeah. a thing? Do you mind? <laughs> you know, and I, oh, I used to love that. I used to love to see him. Oh, and dear, no matter dear. where you were, you know, no yeah. matter where you seen him, yeah. he says, oh, remember the old pantomimes? Mary, do you mind yeah. the old pantomimes? I said, oh, they were good. He says, oh, God, hi, they were good. But, oh, God, he was, they were great people. Yeah. Tell, <laughs> All tell those me. ones. And another name that I remember uh, the late Stevie McKenna uh, mentioning was... Uh, Mossy. Oh, Paddy Mossy. Don't tell me about poor wee Paddy. He was a darling. Paddy Mossy was a darling little man. And he was, oh, he was so good. And, you know, he had the butcher shop up on the top of the thing. Then I used to go and get me meat there. I used to get a lovely piece of meat and everything. Right. <laughs> I used to pick the best for me, honest to goodness. And he was great, Paddy. He was a Paddy man. He was, he was just, and you wouldn't have heard his word either. You know, he wasn't for pushing himself on or anything. And yet he, he never halted. He never faltered. He, he did everything so well and when he was when he had parts when poor Paddy had part he was learning them and learning them and learning so that he wouldn't forget them you know and they had the I think it was a Dickie and 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 okay. Paddy was it uh, was it them was used to act together they used they had the comedy parts ah, together I right. think well did, yeah. did Paddy ever play a straight part in the play or was it always the comedy part did he ever do no, a serious No, you part? see, he was happier just playing the, the, the funny parts, you know. And I can't ever remember he, him being in the, even in the plays. He never wasn't interested right. in plays at all. Right. I remember Stevie put on a, a show for the, the schools called The Good Old Summertime. Uh -huh. And Paddy Mossy was the, what, the, a broth of a boy from the Hibernian Isle. Oh, gosh. <laughs> and he, he was so funny. And yeah. Paddy Mossy was Mickey Gormley. Oh, was it? He was the chairman who he did was, the introductions. He was great too. He was very good, good actor and everything. Oh, yeah. good. I didn't know an awful lot of Michael, good, good, but good. Uh, I thought he w he was good. Any things I was in any plays or the pantomimes or that, you know, he was. He always acted as the dean. He? he was the dean. My goodness. And a wonderful oh, day he oh, was. Yeah. Well, and everything had to be tip top <laughs> and the right things had right. to be on. Oh, <laughs> yes. He had to be, he was the dame and he acted the yes. dame, you know, he was wonderful. And oh. mm -hmm. a difficult part to play. Oh, gone, oh, hi, true, very difficult. Very true. Because you just have to be that wee bit uh, uh -huh. exaggerated, yeah. but at the same time believable. I know. You know? But I mean, he was very good dame. I mean, he had everybody eaten out of his hand, you know, he was great. The right. things he used to say, you know, right. <laughs> great. Well, there was a man called Davy Fullerton. Do you remember Davy? Oh, he was a David. teacher. Should we yeah. still, I still, he never forgets to send me a card every Christmas. David in Belfast. He, him and his family, they're living. They, well, that's where they're from, Belfast. And David and I are still great My pals. Goodness. And uh, last, I remember last Christmas, I missed a, a, a year, I don't know, sick or something, <laughs> and I missed the card, but he sent the card. And be heavens, the next Christmas, only last Christmas, uh, David rang and he says, uh, and then I sent the first card because I was all right. I says, God, he'll think I'm, so I explained to him and Carolyn that we were, she had two, three lovely boys, sons. Right. Did well, right. well too. She had no no girls. It was three boys right. she had, right. and uh, he was very good in the college. He did. A, he was a very clever. I and think he ended up. Was he teaching in Queens? He ended up. Uh, uh, you know, and um, I remember in the good old summer. He was summer a great actor too. Oh, he did a medley of and singer and everything. Oh, he came out and I can still see him with a straw voter. Yes. And he did a medley of Stephen Foster songs. Did all the actors. Oh, and all. he was brilliant. He was great. Very honestly. talented. Very, yes, very, very they, talented. Oh, they were great. Honest to goodness, they were just. And then there were names like uh, George Rogers. 
George would have helped out? Was he doing the the, the sets and oh, that? And the oh backstage? God, he was a gentleman mm. too. George was in charge of this uh, whole setting. He was a wonderful, wonderful man. He had, you know, fellas round him. You know that uh, what he wanted to do, and he used to make that scenery up. He was head right. over it, and and you wouldn't have heard that man's word. My goodness. You know, there was the young lads only starting up. They were just showing their wealth and strength right. all over the place right. you know and you couldn't have been bothered with him but you wouldn't have heard his word right. he would have looked you know at the scenery and that and then he would say now we want we need this now we want that you knew and exactly that. what mm -hmm. was needed just mm -hmm. in the years of experience and then he was the stage he, then they used to get him to do stage manager sometimes right. and he couldn't get some of them up some of the boys and all was down below and he couldn't get them up and, and he was a very quiet man he, he wasn't a man that would have showed any anger or anything you know and he used to say oh mary he says i can't get these <laughs> but the minute he called me i was up and <laughs> standing he didn't have to call me i was up standing and behind the stage before i was ready to go on oh. he said oh mary Oh. Never have to call you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then well, the like of people like us that were so thankful to be in the place yes. and things, we wanted to do our part well, yes. you know. Yes, and, and, and take it seriously. Yes, and, and, and take it seriously. Because yes, you know. my attitude was there are people paying money. Yes, that's right. And you don't know them. That's you know. what I used no. to say. I mean, and they used to love it and they used to appreciate it. Yeah filling up the I mean we used to be stuff and Paddy Laird he, he used to I mean he he was ready to cry when he had to turn them away ah. so that we had to put on another show put on another for the next night you know so to get them as many as we could in and yes. they were all standing outside on the stage you know or outside the along the you know trying to get in the My curtain goodness. Well, you stuff they used to be and the plays used to be the very same the yes. plays Good. were stuffed and then there come a time when there used to be place and you were looking out and there was hardly anybody sure. coming at all but yet the, the thing i always found very strange was i would be involved in in uh, drama in carrick moor yeah and we place called craggan uh -huh. and full houses every yeah. night I, know. I think in the country areas there's a different oh you got attitude. always got a big crowd we, yeah. we used to have wee concerts mm -hmm. i mean father shields is the boys and girls club he used to take us away to concerts here and there and used to be stacked even in, in carrick moor and carrick moor had only a small place that time somebody donated a hall a, not a hall but a, 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 a thing that they were they got a new building yeah. and then they give this over to them and they got it made into that was the first time they had a pantomime there and they got I did Principal Gerd oh, Principal yeah. Boy and Carrick did, Moore and Carrick did Moore I did and they paid me as well oh even better I, I says no not at all that was a pleasure I says to be you know to be asked yes. even and asked and they and they bought me a beautiful dish I still have the dish Lovely. beautiful crystal oh. dish was Pat McCallan involved in that? By any chance? Yes, Pat, Pat. Pat was was in charge of the acting, uh, not the acting. Well, then he did take over acting. acting then he was acting. very good. Very good but timing. Th th they depended on him for getting the stage ah. set. In. He was very oh, efficient. Oh, like that. I, he loved drama. Yes, he was good. Very talented. I did a number oh, of plays he, with he him. He was just very good at everything. He you was, know? and a gentleman. And when it came, oh yes, Lovely gentleman. Man. He, Oh, you never forget these people because, I mean, those Carrick Moore ones, they couldn't have been nice enough to me, you know. Yeah. They used to, uh, you know, there was a, the the woman and man that used to that used to run these things. Would you remember their names? Always, was it? They used to call for me every, uh, when it was time to go, you know, to the thing. They were down here at Cockrow. Right. Of course, I was living away up in a bigger bit. And waiting for me to take me and leave in my home again. But before that, I would go down to their house, the Donnelly's house, and they would have a big tea and everything ready for you before you went away. My goodness. Oh, My goodness. talk about niceness yeah. and. They oh, couldn't people were just interested they in were and so and they were so pleased yes, like yeah, you know yeah you know and then there, there's a great tradition around there of clary the traveling road show a man called clary hayden used to take a, a road show can you remember any plays that came to the the town hall the um michael mclamor does that no, no. I can't. can you you know 
Um, I used to remember a lot of plays. Used to come. We used to always go to them. Like aye, to, aye. It was great sitting back watching them aye, the actors and. Aye. Oh, we were it? we were comparing them, you know, and just going, oh, he he could act none, you know. <laughs> but I don't know. He did that part all wrong. And oh, she I know. Did this I and know. Then. I do the exact same. And oh. we went to uh, we got into the you know the the fest whatever you call them the festival thing yes, we used to yes. put on, and uh, we got as far as. Uh, got as far as, as Belfast right. then we went to Belfast oh, right. and we were there was well there was a there was a lovely play the play that did the play did this play from Belfast and they were wonderful and there was one girl in it and she was just great but Paddy Laird he was it was the festivals we used oh. to go to and Paddy Laird used to say you're you're definitely no no this is all right you're definitely going to get in here you had me built up to the height <laughs> And he used to say, oh, Mary, definitely that part you do is so great. So anyway, it was, a, there was this girl, now she was excellent, but she was only a young girl, but she was acting the, something like me said that I was acting the mother, that uh, acting the old mother. But anyway, she, it, it was between her and I for the, for the, Right, for the award. The, for oh. the award. No, I, I just got the, the next part. She right. got the first. And Paddy, oh, Paddy oh. was given out. You should have got that. Oh. And I says, "Oh no, Paddy, that girl was wonderful in the part she acted. You, you'd have just sworn she was that part." She was you that, know, yeah. And well, that's right. And I think that, and, um, and it's great, you know, just to see somebody uh, that fits into uh -huh, a part uh -huh. so well, you know. But, uh, but there is an awful range. It was a great honour to get even the second oh, yeah. because. Uh, there was the first, second, and third, and we got second, you know. But Paddy was built up to oh be getting the first. Yes. Oh, <laughs> you know, it was. I think Paddy, you know, uh, what do you call um, Michael Holm? Yeah. Joe, what's your Joe? Was a gem. Was he was in the play with us? Oh God, he was a great fella, you know. Right. Great. Right. Right. I mean, he was very, very easy going, you know, Aye. and he wasn't the one that bloated himself about Aye. like but I mean when you got to know him him and I were great friends you know Good we used to get uh, we used to call for uh, for me to go to to Carrick Moor there to see the oh, festivals the and that you know festival, I mean when you know? we weren't in the festival and, and we used to have a great night then go up to we what do you call the wee shop the wee pub oh uh, Mickey to, Quinn's or, or they, I don't uh, know, or I know she uh, was a, a, yes, an older said, lady yes yes I know it and, uh, and just a bit from where yes, the hall was the you were just then well we were there then. till three o'clock right, in the morning yeah. you know and I mean I never drank that time uh, no, I, I don't know, aye. but uh, I used to like a wee glass of wine, one wee glass of wine, and that was it. Aye. But and, and just to talk I over never the liked to get the habit of it, you know. Aye, aye. But uh, you could have, you could have got the wrong place, <laughs> <laughs> and you wouldn't have known what you were drinking. But well, they used to be great. We used to make more people. And they were so so well, nice. Well, I think that's that, that people just involved. Yeah, in, they we were know the amount of work that goes into it. You know, Bernie was my uh, was uh, my teachers, one of my first teachers, and she took me under her wing and used to uh, put me into the faces, and I always won, and I always won in the faces. Faces have got medals, but where they are, I don't know. Medals, cups, you name it. And was that but you had to give the cups back, you know? Uh, you, you got, you them, got, for got them for the year. Uh, yeah. Was that the convent primary school or where, where no, was just it? that school that was burned now? Uh -huh. That's where Mrs. Torney taught there. Uh -huh. And was and she? That's the, where I taught. Was she the? Where was, I was a pupil. Right. How many teachers would you have had in that? Would Would she have taught you? Would you see? Years? There was there was a, no first the first school I ever went to was. Uh, I don't think that that big school done then. Uh, there was just the convent school, you know. And uh, so we always went to Colmore. You know the wee Colmore? Oh, oh yeah. God, you talk yeah. about Colmore. That was a lovely wee school. And there was there was the uh, the Freels, you know, right. uh, uh, Paddy Freel. Uh, you know, they had a pub there just That's at right. the corner there. Of 
Gun, Gun Ryan, John, uh, Gun Ryan, uh, whatever you call that. Street. But anyway, the Claire, Claire Freel was my best friend, Claire. And uh, I mean, my mother, you know, as I said, about the big family my mother had, many a time uh, the, there was no bread in there. So if she didn't, my mother used to bake, bake, bake these big skip scones. You know, and the, the boys used to have them eat up before the cool even. <laughs> we used to laugh at them. And uh, but anyway, the boy whenever when the boys started work, you see, they always got first choice of the tea first. They got the tea first, and then we had to play down the back garden. <laughs> and we said, "God, if they don't hurry up, well, there's going to be nothing left for us." <laughs> well, they, I mean, we used to be. Uh, Killer sides laughing the girls, you know, Rose and all them. So, what way has almost changed for you, Mary? Oh, it's not, God, it's not the same. Not at all, not the same. Uh, I had good friends, uh, good friends at the uh, choir once. They're the last, they're my last friends now, and I still have them. There's Siobhan, Siobhan McQuaid, you know, this one of the singer, singer McQuaid girls. Yes. And she's one of my best friends out of the choir, and uh, there's um, the choir was great, and I was there with Aggie Slay, but I mind uh, now there's there's a, there's about three four or five singers in the choir now, and one uh, what do you call him? He was the head schoolmaster. We were talking about him earlier there. Michael Holm. To uh, your man that Michael he's. Home. And God help him, he can't get up like myself, he couldn't. I went as off. I seen me going up the back stairs, the wee stairs for the choir, and me not fit. And then Paul had said to me, Mary, it's not that I, God, he says, we're going to be lost without you. But he says, you can't come up those steps anymore. He says, you're going to fall, you're going to death. And I had a wee, wee railings and all of the oh. thing. And I was breaking my heart that I had to give up. You Aye, know. of course. It was the whole camaraderie. So, uh -huh. The so, friendship so. and that, you know. Mm -hmm. um, Gertie McCabe was never involved with the player. Gertie was another wonderful person. Oh, she was a... I didn't know Mer, uh, Mer, Gertie, Gertie an awful lot, but she was a oh. lovely, lovely person. Oh, she was very and she, genuine. She, when she used to... Take the took the organ. She took the played the organ for a while, and uh, she was teaching up in the school. You know, that she used to teach the boys. You know, and Mary was such a very soft uh, person. You know that. Yeah. You know, she was very Mary. gentle. Oh, but far she too gentle, was. She far was too a gentle. fantastic. I sang and I sang. Uh, that that um, Phil Coulter wouldn't play the piano in front of Gertie. Is that right? Because they were contemporaries at university. Oh, yes. And he was that in awe of her piano playing. <laughs> and you felt embarrassed yes. playing the keyboard uh -huh. or the piano. Uh -huh. She was a lovely woman.
But in all their grandeur and hopes to squander, my heart would wander for sweet Oma Town.